in two weeks, we will acknowledge the beginning of a new year in the life of the church. On the first Sunday of Advent, we unceremonially move from one liturgical year to the next. As we do, we, we start afresh in our hopes for a deeper relationship. The coming of the Lord into our lives offers. And it is a time to look ahead while remembering the importance of what has passed. There is no brightly colored ball that drops to usher it in. No fireworks, no bands, no big parties. The only visible change is the title on the bulletin. Some greenery hanging in the background. And a series of candles we light each week to remind us of what the new year brings. Why do I bring this up now? instead of in two weeks, when Advent begins, to remind us that we are to keep our focus on what lies ahead, not the craziness of the past or the present. You see, if we are not looking forward, we can lose hope in what awaits us. Today's announcement, while not unexpected, of a suspension of indoor worship, at least through the middle of next month, is disheartening. At vestry meeting the other night, we grieved the loss of our Thanksgiving Eve service and that pie fest. We wondered what Christmas would be like if our numbers don't fall and the suspension remains in place. And we face the stark reality that our inability to gather in person has significantly impacted the number and depth of pledges offered for the coming year. If it were not for a comment made by one of our best members of the Lord's faithfulness to see us through this, I think we all would have walked away from that meeting feeling pretty low. But instead, with our eyes focused beyond the immediate turmoil, we left with an excitement of watching God's grace unfold before us and a realization that with God, all things truly are possible. Reading this week's gospel, for me, reinforce this notion of needing to keep our focus on what lays ahead, not in the past. Those in our reading who succeeded took what they had been given and did what they could, finding that they were blessed in their efforts. The one who failed, he could not see the possibilities before him. Only the limitations of the past. And as a result, he lost even what he had. After this week's vestry meeting, and in light of today's gospel, I wonder what opportunities are before us? What shifts in practice might we take using what we have been given do the work we are called to do. You've heard me say this before. What we are called to do has not changed with this pandemic. Only the way in which we go about it. With this in mind, instead of grieving what is lost, we need to take bold steps in trying something different. We need to move away from what we have always done towards that which we never thought possible before. Take, for instance, the retirement of our organist. Worship seems different without music, doesn't it? And it's unlikely we will fill that position in the short term. But what if those of you who play it in 
ministry. We're to volunteer, to come in and play as part of our worship team on a Sunday morning. Well, I can't fill the sanctuary with musicians. We could have one or more here with proper social distancing to bring back a piece of that which is missing, piece back into the life of our worship. Something else to consider is the broadcasting of our service. What we are doing works. But is it enough? What else can we do? What ways are out there for us to widen the availability of our worship? For both members and the surrounding community. I recently visited with a member of our parish who suggested a way to simulcast our service on multiple social media platforms. Might this be a new ministry that takes shape here in our midst? One that invites people to know the love of God as it revealed in Jesus Christ and as it is lived out here in our community? Why stop looking with our worship? What about the outreach we do? Are there different ways we can still meet the needs of the local community while ensuring the safety of our members? Or what about the ways we enjoy fellowship? If we can't gather together in large groups, what new small group activities and opportunities might we develop? Either in person or using Zoom that brings people together safely to deepen and broaden their relationships. I know some in our community are daunted by the use of technology, but we cannot let our fear of something limit our actions. Like the one serving in today's gospel, preventing us from seeing the possibilities. Something else to consider is that it takes all of us working together to try these different ways in living out our faith in community. No one person can manage it all. That is why the church has relied so much on ministry teams to carry out the work it is called to do. The shape of our teams here at CHS is likely going to change. Because even when the vaccine becomes widely available, what was normal before will likely never be normal changes we are experiencing due to this virus will last generations, if not longer. The question before us is, are we going to focus on the opportunities before us, or are we, like the servant in today's gospel, going to do nothing? in hopes that by our inactions, we might get through this without losing what we cherish. I pray we will focus on the opportunities. It will be difficult for some of us. I know that some of what I do today, I never thought would be part of my ministry as a parish priest. At times, it's overwhelming. And every step of faith I take is not always without fear. But if Scripture is right, and 
I believe it to be. That the trials we face make us stronger than by looking forward. My hope in our ability to come out of this stronger and better at sharing the love, grace, and mercy of God revealed to us in Jesus Christ will sustain us and empower us to be the church we are called to be. So when that day comes,